Mikhail Zygert is a visiting professor at Princeton University and author of All the Kremlin's Men, and he's joining us live from New York. Thank you very much for your time. Firstly, a lot is made of Alexei Navalny's opposition to President Putin, but there was more to him, wasn't there? How do you think that he will be remembered? I think that's a very good question because uh, it's important for many people today who are, because many Russians are completely heartbroken, devastated, and like lost their uh, any hope for the future. But it's important that that Navalny has uh, always been a strong uh, supporter of uh, Russian democracy, and he was one of the few idealists in Russian politics. Um, he has always been the person who strongly believed that Russia is not doomed to be uh, an empire, that Russia is just a normal country that uh, that is capable to, um, to become a real democracy. And that's very important legacy he, um, um, that, that is going to outlive him. So I think that he could be much more dangerous for, for, for President Putin when he's dead, because he is going to be the... Um, more than just a martyr. He's going to be the, the superhero for the next generations to come. And uh, Putin is going to be remembered as a villain who killed the, the most decent uh, po politician in, um, in contemporary Russian history. I think it's important because uh, in, in Russian history, we don't have a lot of uh, superheroes who wanted Russia to be a democracy. And Navalny is... Yeah. The, it's, it's, the it's, spiritual founding father of future Russia. It's interesting that you say that. I mean, you're even calling him a superhero, but Navalny wasn't without his critics, and I'm not talking about the Russian government. Take, for instance, his very pro-nationalist past. He was kicked out of Yabloko, Russia's oldest liberal democratic party, no, 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 for no, his no, nationalist no, no. views, participation in the Russian march, and annual rally of no. thousands of... He wasn't a far-right nationalist, monarchists, white supremacists. If you look no. at international organizations no. like Amnesty International, labeling, labeling him a prisoner of conscience, but then rescinding that because of his anti-immigrant views? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's all wrong. I'm sorry, that's all wrong, that's, uh, that's, that's all uh, terribly wrong. Ra Navalny uh, was not a nationalist. I knew him personally. A lot of people who have known him personally uh, do not consider him Russian, na uh, Russian nationalist. Uh, even more, he was, he has never uh, could be called far-right uh, uh, nationalist. That's totally wrong. He was... So he never uh, he took part in pro-nationalist uh, marches and the early 2000s. I mean, that's very well documented. He was kicked out. You know, of... in, in, in early 2000s, in early 2000s, Vladimir Zelensky was a comedian who was participating uh, in a comedy shows on Russian television. But now he is the leader of democratic Ukraine. Uh, politicians and human beings can change. Okay. Uh, for, for decades, for decades, Alexei Navalny ex uh, expressed his support to Russian democracy, and during recent years, uh, he expressed his support to Ukraine, for example, and to Ukrainian independence. Okay, and he, I... he has proven by his life that, that yeah. he was not a nationalist. Yes, clearly, everyone can change, including politicians. I'm just pointing out to things that Navalny's critics have said in the past about him. What do you think his... Um, death will mean for the Russian opposition, for the opposition in Russia and for Putin's rule? I think the most important thing uh, happened uh, last November when Navalny unveiled his strategy um, about the next presidential election. That is going to happen in a month in Russia. Uh, definitely is going to be a shameful election. Uh, uh, it's going to be pr uh, an, an electoral fraud. But Navalny... Um, appealing to to Russian voters um, called to vote for anyone except for for president Putin so any uh, any puppet who is going to um, to participate in the in those elections uh, could could be the legitimate uh, um, can, candidate for opponents of Putin and I think that this strategy could pose a threat to Putin's legitimacy because yes obviously all the decent politicians are barred from running. Uh, only three puppets um, are participating, but but uh, it, it could be um, a showcase uh, how how Russians really do not support Vladimir Putin. And so, given the climate that you are describing in Russia, why did Alexei Navalny return to the country after he was poisoned and went to Germany for treatment? You know, for him, it was um, it was was very 
difficult decision, I guess, and uh, a lot of people uh, do not understand that. But he uh, he felt that his destiny was uh, to uh, to live in Russia and to do anything he could uh, for the sake of, of Russia's future. And he felt that he could not be an immigrant. Probably he, he was inspired by uh, by the dissidents um, of the past. He was uh, obviously inspired by the leaders of the opposition of Belarus, for example, Marie Kolesnikova, uh, one of the leaders of Belaru Belarusian opposition who who, um, who decided not to leave the country and, and who is now in jail. So, yeah, he felt that uh, that's his moral obligation. All right. That is uh, Mikhail Zyga joining us live from New York there. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.